This is probably the last thing you want coming out of the Cowboy camp that CeeDee Lamb is frustrated. Um, I think that um, this this is a time coming, and we already saw some stats coming out about CeeDee Lamb being a number two receiver, not a true number one. And I, I Richard Sherman said, I actually agree with Richard Sherman. I said this a long time ago, watching him at Oklahoma. He's not number one receiver. He's a, a good number two. He's a T. Higgins. Um, I want to put him in Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith is a one. But he's a good number two receiver. But I don't want to place the blame on CeeDee Lamb for this, the lack of success of the Cowboys. The lack of success of the Cowboys goes to two people, Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott. And they're, inter they're intertwined because Jerry Jones drafted Dak Prescott, and that's his guy. And Dak Prescott is just not a good quarterback. And I've been telling people this, and they, have, they haven't believed me. We, have, we, want, we want Dak Prescott to be good. Um... But first of all, Jerry Jones has – that franchise is not going to win until so Jerry Jones is gone. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, the second thing with Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, Des, Dak Prescott has been equipped with more weapons, I would say, than any other player in, in football over the past five to six years, right? Um, other than the, the Tampa Bay team that was assembled that Tom Brady had was amazing. But the, the team that he has, that the players that he's played with, if you look at it, he's played with Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Cole Beasley, Des Bryant, Terrence Williams, Randall Cobb, um, Tavon Austin, Brandon Cooks, who's playing with him now, uh, T.Y. Hilton. He's had weapons all, like, literally, he's had weapons. And not only that, he's had a great offensive line as well as a, a solid running game. But now that your running game, your, your offensive line isn't strong, your running game isn't as good, and you look at Dak Prescott over the past couple of years or the past two years and look at him this year, you're like, okay, where's our guy? He's got coaches fired. He's got Jason Garrett got fired. He got uh, uh, McCar uh, McCarthy. So probably going to get McCarthy fired. Uh, but he is not the guy for the job. And C. Lamb's frustrated, and he said he said that, he said, "There's something in his in his statement. He said, I had to self-reflect. I didn't get, I, and I didn't go the best route to get my end result. At the end of the day, I have a job to do. I want to contribute to this team. I do everything in my power, week in and week out, to do that. In my power was the big thing. When he said, um, in my power, that's huge. Uh, and and you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, like uh, he's not." He's not blaming the organization, but he is blaming the organization. Like, hey, I, there's only so much they can do. Now, with his dynamic of being a receiver, like, I get it. Like, he's, he's a strong number two. And not saying he can't be number one, but he's a strong number two. But with Dak, with Dak Prescott, he's just not a good decision maker. Um, you know, um, this, is, this is Dak Prescott's response, right? Um, so, that C. Lamb kept on, he kept on saying, hey, he came up to Lamb said he had a conversation with Prescott on Monday, right? Uh, he came up to me and he was like, if you have a problem with anything, just come to me and we can talk about it. I don't care how it necessarily looks in the media, uh, right? Lamb said, but the media said is going to, but the media is going to do what the media does anyway. If I stand by myself, it's a problem. If I go talk to him and put my hands up a little bit, it's a problem, right? At the end of the day, it's just getting down to nitty gritty, getting everything understood, and be uh, and both parts on the same page. Me and Dak, we did that first first day back, so we can have all we can all have a fresh slate after the week. Prescott wants over communication, but he understood the frustrating that the frustration that was born out of an offense that had nine nine of eleven drives last three plays. Our last with Dak uh, was when Dak Prescott was in the game. Um, you know, he says this is this is not leadership. We can be upset about it. We've got to get an answer for it, and the best way for an answer is communication. That's my point. That's my point of him. Hey, come up to me. Come find me. I'll come find you. And since we did, let's get passionate and figure out the answer. Bro, you're the problem. I don't care how many commercials you do. I don't care. Slate member, I don't care. You're the problem, and Dak is the problem. Skip Bitless was right. Dak Prescott's the problem. And until he's gone... This franchise is going to be a best. It's, it's going to continue to underachieve. I don't want the Cowboys to do well, so please keep Dak, Pre Dak Prescott as your quarterback. But this guy's going to ruin people's careers, and people are going to go in and out of this franchise because of two people: because of Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott. You Cowboys fans don't want to hear it, but that's the main reason. 
Dak Prescott and Jerry Jones. You get rid of those two people, things will start looking better. And there's some players on that Cowboys team that I've always wanted to root for, but I couldn't because they were Cowboys fans. And I was looking for an excuse to root for Cowboys, and I couldn't because those two – oh, sorry, I'm getting my laptop, my uh, keyboard. Because those two people get together, you got to get rid of Jerry, and, you, and Jerry's not going anywhere. So Cowboys, just sit tight. This is going. It's always. It's always going to be sadness until he's gone. Always going to be sadness.